growing fear that the axe would drop again. Tonight, as we continue our special month-long series, Project Working, J.J. Gonzalez talks with some AT&T workers about life after the breakup. Among the companies AT&T agreed to get rid of is New Jersey's Western Electric, one of 32 repair centers in the country. AT&T was given until January of next year to divest itself, and a lot of semi-skilled workers are now out on the street. People who hear about divestiture associated with the breaking up of a large telecommunication network of AT&T. There has been very little consideration given to the impact on so many people's lives, losing their jobs, and the impact it has had on their families. A fellow who sits in Washington, D.C., uh, Judge Green, has the right to just say it has to be done and didn't think about the people getting laid off, the economic situation of the country. Louis Oresti was one of 72 workers who lost his job during the initial layoffs this year, now supports his family at a job mixing chemicals, and it pays about half his Western Electric salary. What a lot of these workers are saying is simply one thing. The court decision sent a lot of their jobs overseas. The company says it will make the necessary adjustments just to stay in business. Most importantly is the need from time to time as business conditions warrant, that is, as there's less work available for us to take layoffs where necessary to keep ourselves competitive. I'm going to stay here until they close, then I try to take it from there, whatever happens. Our more senior employees were given a special monetary incentive if they chose to uh, take retirement early, and this, of course, enables us to avoid laying off the younger people. Dimitri Tanchok, 59 years old, took the early retirement, sees no other way. Physically and mentally, I do not want to retire. I'm happy at my work here. But comes the divestiture. The divestiture is what's making me do it. Um, About 500 workers are left at Western Electric. Many expect to be out of work by January. Will they find work? Well, it depends on what they're willing to go for. And there are jobs out there, but the jobs pay nothing. You know, they, they expect you to pay $4 an hour, like, you know, I'm giving you a million bucks, and it's not. $4 an hour is an insult to anybody. Insult or not, the four bucks an hour is better than no job at all. So say the experts at the Labor Department who point out that there's no chance of advancement or salary increases if you're collecting unemployment benefits. Other experts say that families whose members pitch in by taking other jobs to help out grow closer together. And for people who have had to take a cut in salary, there are nonprofit organizations like the Budget and Credit Counseling Service of New York who can tell you how best to adjust your budget and deal with outstanding loans or mortgages. Tony. Thank you, J.J. Series Project Working. We look at workers under the constant threat of being laid off and how they deal with that. Our special team report begins with some workers who are living with that layoff threat. And then Dr. Judy Kuriansky has some advice on how to cope with that or the threat of being fired. First, here's J.J. Gonzalez with a look at the workers. Most of the semi-skilled workers at Western Electric in Union, New Jersey, know for sure that they're going to be laid off in the future. Andy DeRedita has been a transporter at the plant for 10 years. I'm getting married in October. I've been here 10 years. I have to go look for other work now as far as I'm concerned. And it's not just the breaking up of AT&T that's put the axe to their jobs. Workers here maintain and repair phones and phone equipment. They're also scaring the future tech in the eye, and that was too much for Dimitri Tantok. He chose to retire. You can buy a telephone anywhere, so what chance are the people here going to have repairing phones and et cetera? To me, eventually, they'll be out, and they'll be making phones which you can make and throw away phones like uh, anything that you buy today. Carmen Bello has been converting dial phones into push-button types for three years. I really felt depressed because uh, losing my house and my car, and I'm divorced, and by myself, with a daughter eight years old. So from, from that, you can guess how I feel. But the ax hasn't fallen on these employees yet. The ones that have already lost their jobs can tell these workers what it's like for real. Both the arrestees worked at the plant. And I was laid off and filed for unemployment, collected for a couple of weeks. And I was out about a week and a half, and then my husband came home and told me that he was laid off. And I was a mess. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. You know, should I go apply for welfare? Should I apply for food stamps? Uh, what do you do? 
it's like the end of the world, you know. Uh, just so many things run through your mind. What are you going to do? I, I went to unemployment. I couldn't believe it. I mean, this is depression America. This is not the, the America I knew up as I grew up as a child, as I worked. Going to unemployment is the most degrading feeling to anybody. You stand on lines and lines, and they talk to you like you're a piece of meat. Fortunately, the arrestees were able to land other jobs almost right away, but for half the pay they were getting at Western Electric. But it seems if you've been laid off before, it's easier the second time around. Buddy Spindon lost one job after 32 years, hooked up with Western Electric, was out on the street three years later. It hurt the first time after 30 years. It doesn't hurt as much the second time. I mean, I'm still concerned about it. But now I'm three years older. Where do I go? Although still very concerned, Buddy Spindon has fewer problems than the Orestes. His wife works for Western Electric and will probably survive AT&T's reorganization. The Orestes, on the other hand, had to get it together for themselves and did a solid job of taking the layoff and the subsequent drop in stride, and they're making the best of it for the present. Michelle. Well, joining JJ and me right now with more on how to cope with the threat of a layoff or being fired is our clinical psychologist, Dr. Judy Kuriansky. Judy, we're talking really about two different things, aren't we? We're talking about either A, being laid off, or B, being fired. My question to you is, is there a difference in one's emotional reaction to being laid off or being fired? There's a big difference because in being laid off, often it's because the company is closing or the plant is moving, and there's a reason you can give yourself. It's because of this, not because of me. And when people are fired, when they're let go from a job, the danger is, what's wrong with me? And that's the part that people need to then reassure themselves. It's not really something wrong with them as a person, but it wasn't working out because of probably personality problems, politics in the office, or maybe things you could have done better on the job. Julie, really? in, my, in my look at this thing, I've been finding more and more that older people, the older employees who, by the way, earn more money and have more privileges, uh, uh, such as longer vacation times, they are all of a sudden finding they're not welcome in that office too much. And it's a not quite subtle uh, uh, program that's developed to sort of ease them out. Yes, it's